R.C.H. Lenski's examination of St. Paul's epistle to the Galatians presents a profound appreciation for its theological significance and historical context. Lenski heralds Galatians as a cornerstone of Christian doctrine, notably for its emphatic defense of justification by faith alone, a principle that Martin Luther later championed vigorously. This letter is portrayed as a fortress, unassailable in its protection of the gospel's core against distortions and challenges. Unlike Romans, which also addresses justification by faith but in a more theoretical manner, Galatians is depicted as consistently combative and assertive, directly engaging with and countering the threats posed by legalism and moralism to the essence of Christian faith. Lenski's admiration for Galatians extends beyond its human author, the Apostle Paul, to the divine inspiration attributed to the text. He views the Holy Spirit as the true voice behind Paul's words, offering guidance and wisdom that remain relevant across millennia. This perspective accentuates the epistle's role not just as a historical document, but as a living testament to divine truth. Also in his analysis, Lenski acknowledges the contributions of contemporary scholarship, which has shed light on the historical backdrop of Galatians. This research enriches understanding of the text, providing depth to its messages and the circumstances of its creation. However, Lenski warns against allowing historical detail to overshadow the epistle's doctrinal core. He advocates for a focused approach that prioritizes the epistle's theological messages while still recognizing the value of historical context for a fuller comprehension. By urging a balanced engagement with Galatians and related biblical texts, Lenski affirms the importance of both doctrinal depth and historical insight. His commentary champions a holistic view of Galatians, encouraging readers to explore its rich theological landscape and historical nuances to fully appreciate its enduring significance in the Christian faith. Moreover, Lenski's exploration into the identity of the Galatians addressed by Paul in his epistle provides a compelling analysis of historical, geographical, and linguistic considerations. The core inquiry centers on whether the term Galatians denotes an ethnic group, specifically the Celtic tribes known as Galatae, or if it refers to the broader inhabitants of the Roman province named Galatia during Paul's time. This distinction is pivotal as it shapes our understanding of the audience Paul intended his message for. The debate bifurcates into two primary perspectives, one positing that the Galatians were from the expansive northern region of Galatia encompassing cities like Pisinus and Syra and Tavium, and another suggesting a southern locale, closer and more compact, including Antioch, Iconium, Lystra and Derbe, as detailed in the Acts of the Apostles. The term Galatians itself traces back to Keltoi or Keltai, referring to Celtic tribes from ancient Gaul, particularly the Trochmi, Tolistobogii and the Tectus Ages. These tribes, known for their martial prowess, eventually settled in Asia Minor, maintaining their cultural identity despite Roman conquest and incorporation into the provincial framework by 25 BC, which saw the amalgamation of northern Celtic territories with southern areas, thus diversifying the province's demographic. Lenski asserts a frequent oversight among commentators, the New Testament's differential use of ethnographic and Roman provincial names. Luke retains traditional ethnographic designations, while Paul adopts Roman provincial nomenclature abstracting from the specific ethnicities inhabiting those areas. Consequently, the term Galatians, as used by Paul, potentially encompasses a diverse population within the province, including Celts, but also Jews, Greeks, Latins and others, thus broadening the scope of Paul's audience beyond a single ethnic group. This nuanced understanding reveals that the Galatians, in Paul's epistle, represent a multifaceted community reflecting the diverse cultural and ethnic landscape of the Roman province of Galatia. Furthermore, Lenski's examination of Paul's epistle to the Galatians delves into the critical distinction between northern and southern Galatia, addressing the debate over to whom the letter was specifically addressed. His analysis leans heavily on the Acts of the Apostles, where Luke meticulously documents Paul's missionary journeys, providing a detailed account that conspicuously omits any mention of visits to upper, northern Galatia. This omission is pivotal for Lenski's argument, as it suggests that Paul's evangelistic efforts were concentrated in southern Galatia, where the establishment and reinforcement of churches are well documented, notably including a significant visit during Paul's second missionary journey. This visit was crucial for the growth and confirmation of these churches, 
highlighted by the delivery of the decrees from the Jerusalem Council, which played a significant role in expanding their membership and solidifying their faith. Lenski challenges the validity of the Northern theory that suggests Paul's letter was addressed to congregations in Upper Galatia. He indicates the lack of historical and textual evidence to support any missionary work or the founding of churches by Paul in that region. Contrarily, the conditions and events described in the epistle align seamlessly with the experiences of the churches in southern Galatia, as detailed in Acts. This includes the strategic timing of Judaizers' influence, which only emerged after Paul's departure, fitting the narrative timeline and geographic details provided by Luke. In addition, Lenski criticizes the scholarly consensus that favors the Northern theory, a stance significantly influenced by historical reinterpretations long after Paul's time, especially post AD 297, when Galatia's territorial definitions were altered. He contends that this preference overlooks the robust scriptural and historical evidence pointing to Paul's direct engagement with the southern Galatian churches. In essence, Lenski advocates for a re-evaluation of the intended recipients of the Galatians' epistle, strongly debating that it was directed towards the lower southern Galatian churches. His argument is not only rooted in a meticulous analysis of the biblical text, but also challenges historical assumptions, urging a closer alignment with the documented evidence of Paul's missionary activities and the early Christian church's development in Galatia. This perspective not only clarifies the epistle's historical context, but also enriches our understanding of the early Christian landscape. Further, Lenski offers an insightful examination of the Galatian churches within the broader context of Paul's missionary work, challenging conventional interpretations that attribute the Galatians' swift departure from faith to their Celtic ethnicity's presumed fickleness. Lenski maintains the complexities of language and culture Paul would have encountered, particularly in Upper Galatia, where Greek cultural and linguistic influence was limited. This observation suggests that Paul's strategy of addressing the churches in Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Lycaonia as Galatians was a pragmatic choice to collectively refer to diverse groups, mirroring his designation of other ethnically varied congregations in Europe as Macedonians. Lenski critically addresses the common interpretation of Paul's rebuke in Galatians 1, 6, which some link to negative stereotypes of the Celts as inconstant and unreliable, a view purportedly supported by historical characterizations from figures like Caesar and Theory. These characterizations paint the Celts as impulsive, intelligent, yet extremely variable in their commitments, traits that have been hastily applied to explain the Galatian Christians' behavior. However, Lenski disputes that such a reading is overly simplistic and overlooks the diversity of the Galatian church's composition, which likely included a small number of actual Celts among a broader mixed populace. Therefore, Paul's critique should be seen not as an indictment of a particular ethnic temperament, but as a reflection of the challenges any church might face in maintaining doctrinal purity amidst the allure of heretical teachings. Besides, Lenski notes that the epistle itself does not support the conclusion that the Galatians had definitively turned away from Paul's gospel out of fickleness. Instead, Paul's hopeful tone suggests an ongoing effort to realign the Galatians with his teachings, indicating a situation that, while serious, was not beyond repair. This interpretation shifts the focus from ethnic predispositions to the early Christian community's struggles with faithfulness and doctrinal integrity, offering a more nuanced understanding of the Galatians' situation. Additionally, Lenski offers a thorough analysis of the epistle to the Galatians, pointing out Apostle Paul's deep understanding of the challenges facing the Galatian churches, primarily the influence of Judaizers. Lenski postulates that Paul's detailed knowledge stemmed not from written correspondence, or informal communications, but rather from a formal delegation sent by the Galatian churches themselves. This delegation's presence and commission were well known among the Galatians, rendering explicit mentions unnecessary within the epistle. This scenario explains Paul's direct approach in addressing the issues without citing his sources or planning a personal visit, indicating his reliance on the letter's impact to rectify the Judaizers' misleading teachings. Lenski scrutinizes the epistle's origin disputing the traditional belief that it was written from Ephesus. He argues that logistical and contextual evidence suggests Paul was far from Galatia, engaged in significant missionary work elsewhere, making a visit impractical. Corinth emerges as the likely place of composition, 
shortly after Paul's arrival and before the establishment of a robust Christian community there. This timing and location make Galatians potentially the earliest of Paul's letters, even predating 1 Thessalonians. This hypothesis is reinforced by Paul's solitary status during the letter's composition, evidenced by the personal tone of the letter and the absence of greetings from Paul's companions. The inclusion of greetings from all the brethren with me likely refers to members of the Galatian delegation and a few early converts in Corinth, further supporting the early Corinthian authorship. Lenski firmly rejects later dating or locations like Rome for the epistle's creation, citing inconsistencies with known details of Paul's later ministry, such as the collection for Jerusalem mentioned in Romans. This analysis positions Galatians not just as an early work in Paul's epistolary output, but as a crucial document for understanding his initial confrontations with Judaizing influences within early Christian communities. Last but not least, Lenski's interpretation of the epistle to the Galatians unveils Apostle Paul's intricate comprehension of the Judaizers' impact on the Galatian Christian communities. According to Lenski, Paul's weighty insights were not gleaned from casual letters or hearsay, but rather stemmed from a formal delegation sent by the Galatian churches themselves. This group was tasked with conveying the church's challenges directly to Paul, making their mission a matter of common knowledge among the Galatians. This context elucidates Paul's forthright method of addressing the Judaizers' distortions directly through his epistle, circumventing the need for personal citations or the announcement of an impending visit. Paul's reliance on the persuasive power of his written words aimed to counteract the Judaizers' misleading doctrines effectively. In his analytical journey, Lenski challenges the conventional belief that Paul composed this letter from Ephesus, suggesting instead that Corinth was the likely backdrop shortly after Paul's arrival and before a significant Christian presence was established. This proposition places Galatians as possibly the earliest of Paul's letters, potentially preceding even first Thessalonians. This period of composition is marked by Paul's isolation, reflected in the personal tone of the letter and the notable absence of greetings from Paul's fellow workers. The inclusion of all the brethren with me is interpreted as referring to members of the Galatian delegation and a handful of early converts in Corinth, lending weight to the argument for Corinthian authorship during the nascent stages of the Christian community there. Rejecting theories of a later date or alternative locations like Rome for the epistle's creation, Lenski's analysis identifies inconsistencies with established facts of Paul's later ministry activities, such as the collection for the church in Jerusalem detailed in Romans. Through this rigorous examination, Lenski reiterates the Galatians letter, not just as a foundational piece in Paul's epistolary legacy, but as a vital document for understanding the early Christian response to Judaizing influences, showcasing its critical role in the evolution of early Christian theology and communal identity. In conclusion, Lenski's analysis of St. Paul's epistle to the Galatians presents it as a foundational text of Christian doctrine, repeating its robust defense of justification by faith alone, a principle that later became central to Martin Luther's Reformation efforts. Galatians stands out for its assertive tone and direct challenge to legalism and moralism, distinguishing itself from Romans by its practical, combative approach to these threats. Lenski venerates the epistle not only for its apostolic authorship, but also for its divine inspiration, suggesting that the Holy Spirit is the ultimate source of its wisdom and relevance. Moreover, in exploring the identity of the Galatians, Lenski navigates the historical debate over whether the term refers to an ethnic group or the inhabitants of the Roman province of Galatia. His analysis supports a broader interpretation, identifying the Galatians as a diverse community within the province, thereby expanding the scope of Paul's audience beyond a single ethnic group. This perspective enhances understanding of the letter's intended recipients and the complex cultural milieu of ancient Galatia. Furthermore, Lenski critically examines the geographic focus of the letter, advocating for its destination being the churches in southern Galatia, based on scriptural and historical evidence. He disputes the northern theory for its lack of evidence, underlining Paul's known engagements with the southern region. This argument not only clarifies the letter's historical context, but also enriches the understanding of early Christian dynamics. In addition, Lenski challenges assumptions about the Galatians' alleged fickleness, contending against ethnic stereotyping 
and suggesting that Paul's critiques reflect broader challenges in maintaining doctrinal integrity. He posits that the letter's insights were conveyed through a formal delegation from the Galatian churches, which underscores the seriousness of the Judaizing threat and Paul's strategic use of the epistle to address these challenges. Lenski's examination positions Galatians as a critical document for understanding early Christian theology and the community's response to internal and external pressures, emphasizing its enduring significance in the Christian faith.